Hey everyone, my name is Mohit. I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In this developer quick take video, we will see how to use Sockle Builder, a Visual Studio Code extension to declaratively build, run, and explore results from Sockle queries. Without further ado, let's get started. In order to start using Sockle Builder, you will first need to install Visual Studio Code followed by Salesforce CLI, Salesforce extension pack for VS Code, and the Sockle Builder extension. The instructions for installing VS Code and Salesforce CLI is documented. The link for the document is shared in the video description. If you're doing Apex development using the Salesforce VS Code extension pack, you will need a Java JDK kit. If you're only using Sockle Builder, then you can skip the JDK installation. Once you have VS Code installed, click on the extension icons on the activity bar of the VS Code and search first for Salesforce extension pack for VS Code. Click install. Next, search for Sockle Builder extension and click install. Note that the Sockle extension will also be included in the Salesforce extension pack for VS Code later this year as it goes to GA. Next, you will need a Salesforce project. For this demo, I have cloned Easy Spaces app from the sample apps on Trailhead apps repository. In case you want to explore this app, you can obtain by visiting the link shared in the description of the video. To connect to the Salesforce org where you want to execute the Sockle, use Command Palette menu and look for SFDX authorize an org. Note that if you're using a scratch org, you will authorize to devhub org and create a scratch org. To create a scratch org, look for SFDX create a default scratch org menu. To start working with Sockle Builder, we will need a file in the project workspace with extension .soql. For this demo, I want to query all the contacts in the org with filter on reservation status. Reservation status is a custom field and I would like to query for contact records that has a reservation status value not started. To create a .soql file and open the Sockle Builder, find SFDX create query in Sockle Builder menu from command palette. Click on that and let's save the untitled soql file in the script folder as contacts.soql. So once we save that, we are ready to build our query. The editor will allow us to declaratively build the query. So let's start building one now. Let's select object as contact. Note that there is an autocomplete feature that fetches list of all the objects from the org and makes it easy to pick the right objects. Use fields input to select fields to be included in the query. Notice the autocomplete makes it easy to add fields to the query. Also watch that the Sockle query is updated as I pick the fields. Next, we can use filter input to add a where clause to the query. In this example, I need reservation status value equal to not started. Notice that the editor has a built-in feature to show valid accepted values for the pick list feed. In this case, as soon as I select valid value, the warning disappears. Along with standard operators for Sockle, the builder also provides additional operators like starts with, ends with, and contains operator. Now these operators are not part of Sockle language. However, on selecting them, we construct a valid like expression for filter with appropriate wildcards. In this example, when I select starts with, notice the Sockle query has filter expression that uses like keyword followed by wildcard placed after the string. Similarly, take a note of filter expression of Sockle statements when I select ends with operator or when I select contains operator. 
For my final circle, I do not need the second filter. So I'm gonna delete it. Notice that if you have multiple filters, you can choose to either use add, that is if you want to query for data if all the filter conditions meet, or use or logic to retrieve the data if any of the conditions meet. I can also order by using the order by input. In this case, let's say I want to order by name in descending order. So I can select that and add the sorting behavior. I can also use the limit to add a limit to my query. Finally, I can click on run query and get the results. I can expand the columns, sort it, and there is also pagination. And the best part, you can save the result as CSV or in the JSON format to your local machine. There are times when you want to build and execute complex SOQL statements that the SOQL Builder UI does not support yet. For writing such complex SOQL, you can easily switch to the text editor. We provide a toggle menu to allow you to easily switch between the Sockle Builder UI and the text editor. Let's see how to use Sockle Builder for complex queries. To show you how you can still use Sockle Builder for complex queries, let's modify the existing Sockle statements to an aggregate Sockle. Let's say I now need to modify this query to find count of contacts grouped by reservation status. Notice that there is now code completion suggestions. This is powered by Sockel language server. So I say select count of IDs from contact and let's add the group by. Again, it's auto completed for me. And I want to group by a reservation status field. The Sockle language server also adds validation. So if I have a syntax error, the VS code is gonna show that. Once query is ready, switch back to the Sockle builder. There is a warning to make you aware that you can edit this query only in text editor. You can still execute this query using run query and save the results to your local machine in CSV or JSON format. If you need to modify the query again, click on the edit query and toggle back to the text editor. The Sockle Builder is currently in beta. And to learn more about this, visit the documentation link in the video description. We would love your feedback. If you find bugs or have feedback, please open an issue by visiting our GitHub repo. The link for the repo is shared in the video description. I hope this video gave you a good overview of how to get started with Sockle Builder. I hope this is gonna save you some time in constructing your queries. Thanks for watching. If you learned something new, hit like. And if you want more content like this, push directly to you, hit subscribe to receive notifications.